Today I'm going to share with you a simple formula to create warm and soft portraits or group photos in Photoshop. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you wish to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. The first thing we need to do is to create a good base for further stylizing. If you have a closer look, the jeans are very dark here. There is a lot of contrast. The background is kind of distracting. So let's fix all of that first, create a good base. So with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy. Always have a backup. Now let's go to filter, convert for smart filter so that whatever filter we apply, in this case, it's gonna be the camera raw filter. You can always go back and change the values later. Go to filter and then camera raw filter. Now inside of that, in the edit section, by the way, you can also do it in Lightroom. Let's start from the top. In the light section, work with exposure. I feel that this needs to be a bit brighter like so. There is a lot of highlight all around. So let's take it down, maybe all the way down. Now, as you can see, these areas are very, very dark. So let's increase the shadows to about, let's go for 26. And to expand the dynamic range, let's play with whites and blacks. You can also set it automatically by holding the shift key and clicking on auto whites. It does a pretty good job. I'm just going to increase it even more. 22 is fine. These skies are probably losing details, but that is all right. Let's also increase the blacks because if you decrease it, we lose a lot of details right here. Let's increase it to also around that number. That just works. But I still feel there is a lot of contrast in here. So let's simply decrease the contrast as simple as that. That's fine. This creates a good base for further stylizing. It might not be ideal. It might not be punchy. But right now we are just creating a good base. Now it is time for us to make it a bit warmer. To do that, we need to open up color right here. Inside of that, let's increase the temperature because we want to heat it up. Let's set it to about 10 is fine. Now as we do that, there's a lot of green in there. We need to take it away from the greens towards magenta. Let's increase that as well. This is fine. Also, to boost the color slightly, you can play with vibrance. Saturation just boosts the color of every pixel, which we don't want. We want to increase it naturally. So let's increase the vibrance right here. Let's keep it at about 20. You can also have a bit of sharpening as a base to build upon. For that, we need to scroll down and come down to the details section. Inside of that, you can increase sharpening. Let's keep it this way. That's fine. You can also hold the Alt key or the Option key. And then when you increase the radius, you'll be able to see how the contrast is being added towards the edges. And that's how sharpening happens in post, right? It just adds contrast towards the edges. And the radius decides the thickness of that contrast along the edge. If the radius is too high, you'll start to see halos. Have a look. Right now, if I increase the sharpening too much, and if I increase the radius too much, you'll begin to see a lot of halos. So we need to find a sweet spot. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, and then play with the radius. And just when you begin to see the halos, when you zoom out, you don't have to zoom in too much, you can stop. So in this case, I'm gonna stop at about two. That's fine, that's a good number for images like this. Sharpening is too much. So let's decrease it. About 56 is fine. And also details add details. You can also hold the Alt key or the Option key and play with details right here. If we increase the details, you'll see that there are lots of artifacts all around. We don't want that. So let's decrease the details. Keep it about this number. Very, very less six or eight, something like that. Now there is some noise. We need to take care of that. So let us just increase noise reduction. You can even take it higher if you're going for a painterly feel. That's a little hack. And even in this case, I'm going to be a little on the higher side. Let's go for... 24 ish. That's a good number. By the way, if you're going for more settings inside of noise reduction, you can click on this arrow to have more settings show up. But this is fine. I'm going to leave it the way it is. So as you can see, we have created a nice neutral slate for further stylizing. Let us take a look. Here's the before and here is the overall after. Now the next step is creating the separation between the subject and the background. And for a softer feel, a shallow depth of field really helps. And it has become very, very easy with the brand new lens blur inside of Camera Raw. Let's scroll down, open up lens blur, click on apply. That's it. Wonderful, isn't it? Now you can change the blur amount from right here. Let's not have it too much. This is fine. You can change the bokeh boost. You can change which areas you want in focus. There are so many things. And if you zoom in, you'll find the selection might not be perfect in all of the areas. For example, in this area, we might need to work it. Let's say we want to blur this area, select the blur brush, and you can just paint that area for proper result. 
Now you can take your time to do it. I'm not going to bore you with the entire refinement or a better option is get a 1.4 fast lens. Another way to add a nice separation is to add a bit of warmth. First of all, let's apply an overall warmth and then we'll do it a bit separately. Let's close this and scroll down and open up calibration. You can do a lot of color grading with this. Let's play with blue primary first. Let's take down the hue to make it more yellowish in the background. And you can also increase the saturation a bit. Let's go a very little bit, something like that. You can also play with green primary. As you take it down, you see all of that yellow that is being added. So we're going to take this very slightly down. Not so much because later we're going to do a lot of stuff and take the saturation up as well. Now have a look at the dreamy feel before, after. We have come a long way and there is a lot to do. Now let's add some slight warmth to the subjects separately. For that, let's go to the masking section right here and we need to select the subject, right? Click on it. By the way, it also made selection of all the people. So if I were to go back, have a look. See all the people right here. If you wanted to separately select them. Anyway, click on subject. All of them are masked and now if you want to take the time to improve the mask, Go ahead, be my guest. But we are doing simple color adjustments and that is fine. First of all, let's play with light. I still believe the shadows are too dark. So let's slightly increase it, maybe at about, not that much, 10. You can also play with whites a bit, add a bit more punch and maybe, see the blacks are just too dark. So I'm just going to slightly increase that, not too much. This is fine. Still, as you can see, the highlights are kind of overpowering. We need to decrease it for us to be able to create a softer feel. So let's take the highlights down. It's not doing much. We need to be a bit heavy handed with it. So at about minus 36 is fine. That little change. So here's the before, here's the after. It's assimilating better with the feel that we are going for. Now coming to the warmth, let's add a slight bit of warmth inside of the color section. Just increase the temperature. We don't want to be too extreme. Keep it at about 6. That's alright. Also, you can make the subject a bit more sharper than that of the background. They're already blurred, but to draw more attention, you can go to the detail section and just increase the sharpness here as well. Our attention usually goes towards the brightest and the sharpest parts of the image. And that is why background blur is quite popular. The next step is all about adding local adjustments wherever necessary. In this case, we will be adding kind of vignettes here and there. And for that reason, these areas, the lower parts of the subject can get darker. And these areas are already dark. So let's brighten them a little bit first. For that, we need to create a brand new mask by clicking right here and we will select the subject. But this time we want to target the bottom areas. So how do we do that? Simple. Let's click on subtract right here. And how do we want to subtract stuff? Choose linear gradient. And now I'm just going to draw a gradient like this, just so that the bottom areas are affected. Now you can move this around. Let's keep it this way. That's fine. And now, Scroll down and maybe, just maybe, increase the shadows or play with the exposure up to you. Here, I'm just going to increase the shadows to about, let's increase it a bit higher. We can always adjust this later, by the way. Let's keep it this way. That is fine. Bear in mind that we may be adding some vignettes later. Similarly, do any kind of local adjustments that is required for your image. Any kind of correction. Let's say one of the subjects is behind, has been darkened by a shadow. You may need to brighten that up. Maybe there is an area of the image that is too dark or too bright and you need to adjust that. Do that right now in this section. Now we are slowly moving towards stylizing and everything you do here is your unique artistic expression. In this case, I feel for a softer feel, we need to add a bit of glare, a beautiful glare. For that, let's create a brand new mask by clicking here. Keep in mind, we are in the masking section. Inside of that, let us pick a radial gradient and we will create a gradient maybe like this. Now this light leak right here needs to be a bit brighter, right? So let's scroll down and come to the exposure settings or the light settings. Increase the exposure there slightly. Let's go for even higher. We are going for a stylistic look. We don't have to worry about losing details. This is art that we are creating. So let's go for one. That's great. And we don't want any contrast there. So let us just take it down. And if you do want to bring back some of the details in the highlights, you can also take that down as well. Let's take it all the way down. Now, when you add an exposure like this, the extreme darks get compromised, thus creating a faded feel. To combat that, you can play with blacks right here. Let's take that down to bring back the lost darks. Let's keep it at about minus 18. That's a nice feel. You can also make the glare or the light leak a bit warmer. Let's scroll down, increase the temperature. 
six is fine. And that's pretty much good to go. We will add a little more later, but for right now, this is fine. Now, as we are talking about stylizing, we can do an infinite number of things. We can come back to the edit section. Inside of that, go to curves, play with the curves. Inside of that, go to effects, play with a bunch of stuff right here, like texture, clarity, go to color grading, and that can be an entire new lesson. You can also go to the masking section, create different masks, apply different colors in different areas, but I'm gonna keep it simple. In the later versions of Camera Raw, just go to the presets section and in here you have like, I don't know, bazillions, maybe not that number, but a lot of presets. And the best part is you can just scroll through them. It will give you a preview of all of those presets and pick what you like and go from there. Use that as a starting point. Now, since we have created a very nice base, most presets would work great. You can start with deep skin, maybe go for a yellow look or an orange look, use that as a starting point. You can also play with the ones in the medium skin section. It doesn't matter whether you have medium skin or dark skin, just play with everything. This is great too for a neutral look. And wow, this just works. Let's select it. And the best part is you can increase the amount of this or decrease the amount of this. I'm gonna keep it at about 100. This is just working perfectly. And you know what? We're just gonna stop right there. It's pretty much amazingly done. Let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after, all in camera raw. Now hit OK once you're satisfied. Done. So cool. Now let us do some finishing touches. Now these are the finishing touches that are way easier to do with the help of Photoshop. So this is our camera raw layer. Let's make a copy of this by pressing Ctrl or Command J. I want to add a bit of autumn kind of feel, warmth, but only in the background. So let's name this warm feel. Now the great advantage of smart object is you can always go back to the filter by double clicking on it. And all of the changes that you had made is right here. I'm gonna go to calibration right here and just decrease the hue even further. And as we do that, have a look at the background. It's so vibrant and nice, but it's also affecting the subject and the skin tone. So we will just target the backgrounds with this one. Let's keep it at minus 30-ish and also increase the saturation. That's even nicer. Not that much, 20 is fine. And for the blue primary too, let's change the hue. Oh my gosh, that's that autumn feel. Let's go further, this is great. Hit OK. Now it's also affecting the subject way too much, so we need to take it away from it. How do we do that? Easy in Photoshop, select any of these three selection tools. For example, the quick selection tool. And at the top, click on select subject. It does a pretty okay job. And now hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask button to create a negative mask. Those areas will not be targeted and the background will be. Now this can be too much, so you may wanna play with opacity. So I'm just gonna keep it at about 40 or even 50%. Now, as we are doing these finishing touches inside of Photoshop, you can just go crazy with it. There is no end to how much we can do and we need to learn when to stop. Let's keep going anyway. Now, one of the cool ways to add some color pop is adding a gradient. So let's pick this gradient and let us create a simple radial gradient Click on the radial gradient, not the linear, the radial one. And let's drag in a gradient. You want to make sure mask is not selected, otherwise the gradient will be inside of the mask. Create a new layer first, and then let's create this gradient. And I'm going to keep it possibly this way. All right. And maybe let's squish it like so. That's nice. And now, by the way, if you're holding shift, it will rotate at 15 degrees at a time so that it's perfect 90 right now. This is fine. Now let's change the blend mode of this layer to soft light. Of course, we will need to change the colors. This is way too much. And also let's take it away from the dark areas because otherwise these areas will get too dark. So double click on the right hand side of this layer. This opens up the layer style dialog box. Inside of that, take the slider of the underlying layer from left to right. It goes away from the dark areas, but this is harsh. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart, take it all the way apart to make the transition smoother. Hit OK. Now to change the colors, you can just double click right here. Let's click here. Let's pick a yellow color, something like so. And you can have it bright, you can have it a bit darker, up to you. So I'm gonna keep it this way, hit OK. Now for the dark color, you can just double click right here. And let's also pick a warmer yellow and simply pick a darker tone of that. That's all. And this just works so nicely. Let me share this with you. Here is the before, see that? 
Here's the after that added a slight bit of warmth. Now for the flare or the light leak, you can add one more layer and then select the gradient tool right here. And this time as well, choose the radial gradient and drag in a gradient like so. Now we don't want it to be squished. You can if you wish. Now this time for the bright color, double click on it and select a brighter yellow, something like that. Hit OK. And for this end right here, double click on it, choose the red color. Maybe let's go for a bit of orange. Hit OK. Now as the gradient goes, we need to make it transparent at this point. Very easy to do with the gradient layer selected. Open up layer properties, go to window and you want to make sure properties is checked or it might be already in here, tucked in. Now on the right hand side, we want to make it transparent. So in the opacity controls, select this point and set the opacity there to zero. There you have it, a very nice leak. But it should make stuff brighter, right? So what is the most common blend mode that makes stuff brighter? Screen, right? So change the blend mode from normal to screen. And as soon as you do that, have a look at the leak. It's so good. Now you can play with it. You can place it wherever you like. So I'm going to place it right about there. It just works. If you feel it's too much, you can always decrease the opacity or change the size of it. I think this is fine. And now it is finally time for you to take a little break and that allows for you to scout for little mistakes inside of your work. We get so engrossed in the work that we might miss out on the little things. A break is very, very necessary. As you come back from the break, I noticed that this area of the subject is very much highlighted. Click on the adjustment layer icon and this time create a solid color adjustment layer. Hit OK. Fill layer actually. Now let's turn it off and double click on the symbol of the adjustment layer to open up the color picker. Pick her skin tone, pick a brighter shade of it, hit OK. Now you can turn this on and change the blend mode to multiply to darken and just apply on that area. So change the blend mode from normal to multiply. And oh my gosh, this looks great all throughout the image. So why not just also do that? Let's decrease the opacity. Definitely this is going to be a bit much. Let's keep it at about 26. That's a good number. Now for this bright area, let's make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Take the brush with white as the foreground color and with a soft round brush, just paint on that area. You can even increase the opacity to fix that. So in this case, I'm gonna keep it at about 60. And also if you want to limit it just to the extreme bright areas, you can use Blend If by double clicking on the right hand side of the layer and taking it away from the dark area similarly by holding the Alt key or the Option key Click on the slider of the underlying layer on the left hand side and take it all the way apart. So that way it only targets the extreme bright areas. We took it away from the dark areas. And there you go. That is it. I think we should stop here. I know we can just keep going, but we need a place to stop. So here is the overall before and here is the after. I recommend taking a little more time for a cleaner mask for background blur. You can add some overall grain or texture towards the end. So that's pretty much it for this video. A simple formula for warm, soft portraits. All you need to do is to first create a good base for stylizing further. Then try to create separation between the subject and the background. Then I recommend adding some local adjustments wherever necessary. And then it is time for you to get creative and stylize. And as a last step, always take a break. Come back to the image and do your finishing touches and corrections. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this one helped and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and incredible people for supporting Pixel Perfect on Patreon and making videos like this possible. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.